everybody, it's Heather with Diamonds and Dragonflies, and I am here today with my weekly whip and chat. If you are new, whip and chat stands for work in progress, and chat means I'm going to chat with you. I'm going to talk to you about my week, what's been going on, um, how life is, etc., etc. So uh, sit back, pull out whatever you're working on, or just sit back and kick up your feet. Whatever uh, floats your boat, you can treat this as a podcast, you can watch, you can listen, you can do a little bit of both, um, but I'm just going to keep you company for the next approximately about an hour, um, and uh, we're going to get into it. So let me go over what I'm working on. So I am working on my Capricorn painting. Um, here is a picture of it. Isn't it so cute? Uh, it is from the one with the diamond art. I do have a code that gives you 10% off your purchase. It will be in the description of this video. Um, this is my project bag from Wolfgazer Studios. Uh, so this was the celestial one. Uh, my cover release papers that I'm using are Capricorn Galaxy from Bee's Crafty Corner. So I'm using those. And let's see, what else do I have going on here? Uh, this is my washi tape that I used around the outside. This was just from a Amazon pack of celestial washi tape that I got. It's working pretty good. Um, it is only peeling up a little bit, but that's also on the edge where I am constantly leaning. So I think that's part of the reason. Uh, the tray I'm using today is an Inferno tray from Firefly. This was a gift from my good friend, Laureen. She brought this for me when she came to visit a couple of weeks ago. So thank you, Lorraine, for that. And this is the Inferno style, which this was my first Inferno tray. I have Nano, Inferno Nanos, but this was my first like regular Inferno tray and I love it. It is a great, perfect size for me. Um, my trash minder is this little crescent moon that I got from Nikki Carell of Lady Lathe Customs by Design. Uh, my cover minders, I have this gorgeous dragonfly from Black Dahlia Diamond Art. And I have this astrology plate from Black Dahlia Diamond Art. And then last but not least from Black Dahlia Art Diamond Art, I have, I'm using the Storm Watching uh, Putty from their summer collection. Uh, in my single placer, I'm actually using Joy's Putty ha um, Cherry Blossom. This is a half of a pack. You can get a full size. I did just get the half. Um, this is great, tested and approved for ABs. And so that's why I'm using that in my single placer. Um, my trinket tray is from Lady Lathe from Nikki Carell. Sorry about the ring light. Um, it is What's Your Sign 2024 because that is what this kit is for. It is for an event that Black Dahlia Diamond Art is hosting on their Facebook page. And then my pen, which I actually had this pen made a long time ago. This is from Stacy Travis of Lady Lathe Customs by Design. I won this in a Claim Me uh, drop that she did on Facebook. It was my first purchase from Lady Lathe. So it was called Purple Galaxy, and I thought it was amazing how it matched the colors for the event perfectly. And then Keeping Me Company is my one of my newest little dragon friends. He is from DJC 3D Prints. I actually have a short um, on my channel showing all of the new dragons I got from them. They hand painted the eyes and he is just gorgeous, but he is so cute. So he is gonna lay here off to the side to watch me while I diamond paint. Um, so I welcomed everyone that was new. So for anyone that is returning, thank you. I really appreciate you your loyalty and supporting my channel. It means the world to me. Um, so I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, so hopefully all of you newbies will enjoy yourself and you will decide to subscribe. It is 100% totally free. And I would love to have you be a part of my online community. I haven't really mentioned this in a while, so I am gonna do a little like plug shout out for my Patreon. I do have a Patreon. Um, there are three tiers and they all give different things. Um, you get a lot even just with the lowest tier. Uh, the middle tier is probably what I would consider gives you the best perks overall. Um, and 
the best bang for your buck, I guess. So I would, if you would love to get to know me better and have me get to know you and be part of my, you know, like little personal community. Um, one of my Patreons has lovingly taught, named us the Diamond Tribe. Um, I'm seriously considering having t-shirts made for all of us to have that are part of the Diamond Tribe. Um, I would love, love, love to have more people join the Diamond Tribe. So um, all of those links are below. You can also decide to just do buy me a coffee if you want to help support. Um, I am non-monetized on YouTube and I will always remain non-monetized on YouTube. I am not going to become monetized at any point. Um, that's not why I started my channel. I am also just got approved for my disability. So I don't want to do anything to um, interfere with that. Um, and that's not why I'm doing YouTube. However, it does cost me money to keep buying things for giveaways, for prizes, um, for uh, to maintain some of the simple things like my Zoom, um, Zoom subscription and Canva subscription um, and StreamYard subscription. Those things add up um, and they're not cheap and they're coming out of my pocket at the moment. Um, and I am fully disabled. I actually have not received a disability check as of yet. I'm still waiting for them to start sending me my money. Uh, hopefully it will be sooner than later because let me tell you guys, uh, things are really tight right now. I, I went on, I went down the rabbit hole again and I went on a major shopping spree and now I'm paying the price for it. Um, it's bad. It, this is the worst it's ever been. Um, and unfortunately, as most of you know, when you buy from small shops, it's not like you can just take the stuff back and return it and get your money back. It, it doesn't work that way. Um, so I am, we're really, really struggling. I, I, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm just gonna lay it out there. Um, we went, my husband took me to go pick up medications. I had five to pick up. I could afford to get one. So I picked up the one that I felt was the most important and um, hopefully I can just stretch them out, do every other day or something with what I have left to get me to the next pay period um, where hopefully things will be a little better. Um, I'm trying to work with the electric company to not turn off our electricity on Thursday. so. <laughs> Um, keep your fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. Uh, we applied for assistance, of course, was told that my husband makes too much because they don't take into account all the bills that you have. Um, and it's like, okay, yeah, no. Um, so fingers crossed, guys, fingers crossed. Um, I expected to have my back pay from Social Security by now. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have known that there's no way that would have happened in a timely fashion, you know, but when you get a, you are approved in May and here it's the beginning of July and you still haven't gotten anything, you, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I really need to start working harder, I guess, with my therapist about my shopping addiction. Um, Cause it's been really hard. I mean, it's been hard just this week because, uh, I've been really depressed about all of this and I still want to buy things, you know, and I gotta say no. And it, it's really difficult. It really, really is. And if I have this much trouble shopping, I can't even imagine what it's like for someone who has a alcohol or drug addiction. I mean, I feel kind of stupid saying that I have an addiction, um, a shopping addiction because it just seems ridiculous. It's like, have some willpower. You don't have the money. You don't have the money, you know, but unfortunately there's, you know, these pay in four plans and it, it, it's, it's just really bad guys. It's really, really bad. And I'm, I'm kind of ashamed. I'm kind of ashamed that I've gotten myself into this situation. Um, it's also very frustrating that, you know, it, I posted a bunch of kits for sale. Um, some of them sold, so I was able to 
pay some things, but um, then I got the turnoff notice and nothing else is sold. And I can't really lower the prices anymore because if I lower them any lower, then it's still, it's, it's going to be pointless to sell them because I'm still not going to make enough money to, um, you know, cover the bill that I need to cover. So I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, so any thoughts, suggestions would be quite helpful. So, um, so yeah, so I am going to go and do a shout out for those things. Um, because I was not paying attention, and of course my StreamYard, my Zoom, and my um, Canva monthly fees all hit at the same time, and I'm like, wonderful. So, because um, I would have just paused them for the time being, but uh, didn't didn't really get to that in time, and so all of them can't. It, it's it's just a whole thing. Um, but we're we're not here to talk about that. So let's. Just please be careful and mindful of your spending, guys. Don't, don't be an idiot like me. So, um, so anyway, I hope you all are doing well. Um, I hope you're doing better than me. That's for damn sure. Um, it has been a week. Um, my daughter was home this past week. Um, she arrived back here, um, well, she was in my whip and chat, as you know, last week. So we did the whip and chat together while we worked on Dragon Seasons from Emma Casey and Enablers Outpost. Uh, we did not, um, we still haven't finished the spring panel. So I don't even think we're quite halfway. Um, I think we still need to do a little more. Well, maybe, maybe we're at halfway, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, we were joking that we'll get spring done by summer and then summer done by winter. And <laughs> that's kind of how it's going to go. So we'll see. Um, because she won't be home until sometime in August. Uh, she's going to come back, but not for nearly as long. She can't keep affording to take off a week at a time uh, to come home. So it'll probably just be a long weekend, like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, kind of deal. I was fortunate in the fact that she was originally supposed to leave on Friday and go home and she was having such a good time and since I wasn't being my typical normal guilt trippy self um, and she decided to surprise me and she decided to stay until Sunday which meant the world to me. Um, I would, I am so grateful that I got those extra two days with her. It, it really truly meant a great deal to me and I will forever be grateful that she did that. Um, she made a point of telling me, don't expect this to always be the case. So, um, but in this case, she, she did decide to stay a little longer. And like I said, that meant the world to me. So, um, what has been going on? Okay, so July 3rd, uh, which is when my whip and chat came out, that Wednesday night, uh, William, Emily, myself, and my husband all went to see Despicable Me 4. Um, I think I've mentioned before that my husband is a minion lover, <laughs> which is really, really kind of comical to say that my stoic uh, husband... Um, who is a former Marine, if that's even a thing, because I think once a Marine, always a Marine, but um, that he absolutely falls to pieces and loves the Minions. So he had asked that we all go see it together as a family, so we did. We had a blast, guys. It, we had such a good time. The movie was hilarious. Um, the kids had a great time. I had a great time. Um, my husband had an amazing time. They were selling these um, minion buckets and my husband wanted one and so he got one and he held it the whole night um, for the movie. He has it in the back of his car looking out the back window um, and it's it, it just made him so happy. And my husband does not do a whole lot of things for himself. 
he rarely asks for anything. He rarely asks to go anywhere or do anything. And so we all knew how important this was for him, that he requested that we all go, that he wanted to go and have us do this as a family. And I was so glad that we were able to make it work and we were able to go and do it. Um, so he was, he was thrilled. Um, I was able to get turn in my, my husband and I belong to the Regal Unlimited plan. So our tickets were free. Um, I was able to get Emily's ticket for free. So we only had to pay for William. Um, he was the only ticket that we had to pay for. So that was good. And, um, so we were able to save some money there. And, um, I had some, I had points to redeem, so we were able to get snacks for free, and I, I will admit I, I smuggled in some candy, so shh, don't tell anybody, um, but yeah, so we were able to make it work um, at that point in time, so um, I was very grateful that we were able to do that. Uh, we did not do anything. We didn't do anything for 4th of July. We did have some hot dogs um, on the grill uh, that we had left over. Um, or I shouldn't say left over. I had some in the freezer that we had bought a while ago that we had frozen and along with some hot dog rolls. So we had hot dogs and um, my husband did go and cook them on the grill. And... Um, we had some chips in the house, so, you know, that's what we had for dinner. We didn't go to the, um, the fireworks. It was just so hot, and we just did not want to sit outside in the heat. It was, it was just too much. And, you know, my daughter and I were talking about how, you know, it used to be the kind of thing that you waited all year for. You couldn't wait for the 4th of July so that you could go to the fireworks. Well, that's because that was like the only time that you used to get to see fireworks. Now, I, I mean, they've got fireworks for everything. There's fireworks for carnivals. There's fireworks for concerts. I, I mean, especially around here where I live, there's, con there's fireworks all the time for everything under the sun um, all year long. Um, I do live in a state that sells fireworks and people buy fireworks and set them off for just about anything. So they aren't as, a no they're not as much of a novelty as what they used to be, which in some ways is kind of sad um, because that anticipation was, you know, something that I looked forward to, something that I enjoyed and would spend my year you know, looking towards happening and that's gone now, you know, and it's, it's kind of sad. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is and there's not really a whole lot. It's not like there's anything I can do about it, you know? Um, and it's a little hard to avoid fireworks. I mean, I'm not saying that we we're going out and watching them, but we sure as heck can hear them, you know? all the time so we just we just stayed at home and just watched some tv uh emily has been on this um world war ii and war movies and knowledge and and stuff like that um so we watched a whole bunch of documentaries on world war ii um documentaries on the cold war uh, she had never seen Good Morning Vietnam, and so we watched that movie, which is, you know, it's it's based on a real person, and it was funny because she's watching it and she's listening to the, the jokes that, you know, Robin Williams is saying, and she's like, oh my God, that is so inappropriate, and I'm just dying laughing because, you know, it it wasn't inappropriate back in the day. I mean... Yes, it was, but no, it wasn't, you know. Um, it, it technically, yes, it was inappropriate, 
even back in the day, but nobody felt that way. You know, that's, it's, it's just so kind of odd, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Now I know I saw another end. There it is. Um, it's kind of odd because we hear and see things now and it's, it's like they're, they're funny, but not funny. And there are things that at my age that I remember just being the norm and they don't mean the same thing. Like, it's like people just were not as offended by stuff back when I was her age than people are now. It's like people are so thin skinned and they get offended by the slightest little thing, even if it's not something that's being said in an offensive manner. Um, and it, I don't know. No, that doesn't apply to everything. There are some things that are like, okay, well, that that's just, that's not appropriate. You know, but not about everything. I just feel like, I feel sometimes like people are just too thin-skinned nowadays. Everything has to be an argument. Everything has to be a, you know, a, a social crime or, or whatever. Um, and it's, it's exhausting sometimes to think about how absolutely careful you have to be because so many things that even if you don't think that you're saying anything wrong, somebody finds offense to it and things get blown out of proportion and it, it's just really sad. It's, it's just really, really sad. Um, and I don't even know if what I'm saying is, is coming across the way that I, I mean it. Hopefully you guys all understand what I'm trying to say here. And, you know, I don't ever mean any bad, badness to anybody or hurt or making people feel uncomfortable. That's never, never, never what I want to, to convey. Um, I tell you, this letter N is just going to be the bane of my existence because this is like the third time I've had to pull out this container to put one of those in because I keep finding them. Um, even though I've already done that color and I searched for it. But, you know, um, I do want to take this, take a moment here and apologize to anybody that was offended by my live. Um... We did get a little rowdy with our use of foul language. Um, we were having a lot of fun. Um, I have been told by a couple of people that it was really, really loud, that they had to turn the volume down. So I do apologize for that. Um, I did not mean to, to blast or blare or blow anyone's eardrums out. Uh, my daughter and I do tend to be very loud spoken and our voices project very well. Um, so if, if we were too loud or hurt anyone's eardrums, I am very sorry for that. Um, I hope that nobody, somebody commented, stop yelling at us. I, I asked exactly what that was about. Cause I don't, feel like I was yelling at anyone, but maybe that's just, maybe they mean that I was just being super loud. Um, the only person or thing I was yelling at was the dog. Atlas was in, um, rare, rare form during that. And my husband was in the room the whole time. Tech support was there, but he had his headphones on playing a game. And for whatever reason, he just decided to ignore the dog. Normally he corrals Atlas and deals with him. And I'm not quite sure why he decided to be oblivious and ignore him. I mean, I will be honest, it kind of pissed me off. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of like his unspoken job. Um, I guess maybe it needs to be spoken now and not be unspoken. So, so that, that might be something that I have to think about in the future, talking to him. 
Um, just as a reminder, there will not be a live on Saturday because I am going live next Thursday, July 18th. I will be live on Thursday night at 8 p.m. to do my 500 subscriber giveaway. Yes, I realize I am over 750 now. Um, this has been planned for a while. It was the date that I could get Lady Lathe Customs by Design, all three ladies, to be able to be on my live. Um, so they are going to be on my live. They have donated some amazing things for me to give away. And I will be, we will be doing that together. You guys will get to meet them, hear how they got started doing the things that they do. Um, you know, just, and for us to just have a good time. Um, there will be five pen blanks that Vicki Peterson will be, um, that you will be able to claim um, and then pay to have them turned. Uh, so bring your, your credit card or your PayPal information because she will invoice you on PayPal, but you'll be able to get a custom turning of the blanks. There will be four or five that you can choose from um, that you can, you can go and try and claim. Um, Nikki Carell will be there and you guys can order uh, custom trinket trays from her if you would like. And Stacy Travis will be there, and you can order custom resin items from her as well. Um, so that will be super, super cool, and I am really excited about it. Um, I can't believe that I'm already at 750. I think I said by September 1st I wanted to get there, and here I, w I hit 750, I think Friday night, so July 5th. Um, so that was really, really exciting. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you. Um, you guys really do mean a lot to me. Um, I wish more of you would sign up for my Patreon only because I have gotten to know the ladies that are in my Patreon. There is 15 of us and I have gotten to know them so well. We have a Facebook chat and we all talk every day multiple times. I mean, all day long, we're all chatting. You can put a comment in there at any given time and at least two or three people are going to respond. Minimum. Um, we support each other. We are there for each other. It, it, it is just absolutely amazing. And I would love to be able to have more people um, to get to know more of you because you all mean the world to me. You truly, truly do. And I would desperately love to meet more of you. So if that's something that you think you can do, obviously I don't ever want anyone to do anything that is going to endanger themselves financially. But you can get in the Facebook chat for just joining the $5 tier. So the lowest tier gets you that. $10 gets you the Zoom. The only difference between the $10 and the $20 level is that I do, for the $20 level, you get um, random giveaways where I give away, your name goes into drawings for a giveaway. So, but, you know, the, the $10 is the best bang for the buck, but even the $5 you get into the Facebook chat and can join our little diamond tribe. Um... And I would really love to get to know more of you. Those ladies mean the world to me. So Alva, Tori, Shell, Jackie, Sandra, uh, Elizabeth, Angie, Clarissa, um, Tori. God, I know I'm missing people. Um, the, and there's more of you. So all the rest of you, I love you guys. To Wendy. Wendy. Um, I love you guys to pieces. I really, really do. And I, I, Katrina, Kat, can't forget Kat. Wow, I talk to Kat like daily. Um, my mind is just literally drawing a blank, guys. I'm so sorry for anybody that I forgot. Sarah, um, I know you're in there. Now, Sarah hasn't signed, she hasn't joined the Facebook group. Um, so I don't know if, if, she doesn't know about it or she might not be on Facebook. I'm not sure, but 
you know, you, you guys are amazing and I love you guys to pieces. So, um, yeah. So I would love to get to know more of you. All right. Well, I was tagged over a week ago and I'm so sorry, but Naomi from House of Miscellanea, um, she went and tagged me to do some tag questions and I thought that would be kind of fun to do today. So I have them up here on my, I haven't looked at them yet. So some of these I'm going to have to guess on. Um, so we'll, we'll see. So here we go. Question number one, how many diamond paintings have you completed? Well, I don't know overall. I can tell you that for 2024, I have completed 33 diamond paintings so far in 2024. Um, I know that when I started keeping count, which was September of 2023, from 2020, September of 2023 till December 31st of 2023, I completed 18. So 18 and 33, um, is how much? 18, 33, that's four, carry two, or no. 18, 33, 11, carry one. Oh my God, I'm multiplying. Um, three, four, five, so 50, 51 so far. And then I diamond painted for two years prior to that. Well, two and a half actually, where I was doing other canvases and I did not keep them, I did not keep a record. I would say I have probably easily done I don't know, 80, somewhere between 80 to 100, I guess would be an inadequate. And that would be in three years and four months. But I can definitely say 18 between September 1st and December 31st of 2023, and then 33 this year so far. So those I can definitely give you. Um, if you are comfortable answering this, how many diamond paintings do you currently have in your stash? Um, I need to actually go back through and update my gems to flow because I have de-stashed a lot of kits and then I've also added a lot of kits. Um, I'm going to say that actual on canvas, so this would include paint gems, in all canvases that are larger than, that are 30 by 30 or larger and are full drill. So I'm not counting any partials or counting any off canvas like the magnets and coasters and things like that that I do. I'm, it was as of January 1st, 219. Yeah. I wanna say that it's probably now more like 150. I actually do need to go through, I need to spend a day one day and go through that list and and update my gems flow and get more of an accurate, because I think my gems flow says right now 108, but I know that there's a lot of kits. Well, there's some kits in there I need to take out because I sold them, but I know that there's quite a few kits that I have to add that aren't in there. So I'm gonna say around 150. If you count my off canvas projects, then I'm probably around 200. So I know a lot of people might be like, oh my God, and I kinda am like that. But then again, guys, I've done 33 paintings in six months. So, <laughs> That's a lot. And that's not even counting all of the off canvas projects I've done. I've done over 40 off canvas projects in that time frame. So, you know, I, I diamond paint a lot. I, I finish a lot. So that number is really not that outrageous when you think about how much I diamond paint in a year. So I'm, I'm not overly, I have definitely gotten way more picky. 
Um, I end up putting a lot of paintings just on my wish list. And then sometimes when I have points built up, I will decide to go and, and that was not supposed to go there. That was a U that I skipped. Um, hang on, let me pop that out. There we go. Um, I, I'll add something so that I can get free shipping or something along those lines sometimes. So, and there's some things that go on my wish list that I never buy. Um, so I've definitely gotten to be, like I didn't make any purchases this past week. Now, from Diamond Art Club, well, I didn't make any purchases from anybody. Um, I have, oh, that one does not belong in there. Um, I have purchased the last like six or seven weeks in a row because they kept releasing a Spangler Bird. There were two kits this past Saturday that I was interested in, but I put them on my wish list instead because um, I knew I didn't have money. Um, and they weren't like, oh my God, I have to have them. They were like, oh, those are really cool. And that was the dog one because the bulldog in the front looks just like Atlas. So except for the, it's got his facial expression. Now, Atlas is a brindle. He is not um, a fawn in white. Um, so that was one stark difference, but he still has that same facial expression that that dog was making. Um, but I, I wish listed it. I did not purchase. The same for the dragon. I really like that dragon, but I, I just put it on my wish list. Um, I really like the signs that came out today. Um, but I put them on my wish list. So um, I'm not going to purchase any of the new storage. At least I'm not planning on it. It's a little pricey. And I have more than enough storage. I have multiple Elizabeth Ward trays. And as you guys know, I prefer kitting up into trays instead of containers. So I'm, you know, unfortunately, like my my trays were being taken up. So I'm, you know, I kitted up into Elizabeth Ward for this kit. Um, but it's a small kit, so it won't, I won't be working on it for, you know, a long, 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 long time or anything. So it, it was, it was fine. Um, okay. Next question. When did you begin diamond painting? Tell us your diamond painting backstory. Well, I have told this before, so I'm just going to do it kind of in a, in a quick way. Um, I started diamond painting February of 2021. Um, I had been seen for about a year uh, advertisements about it was very intrigued, but I suffer from borderline personality disorder. And one of the things with that is we don't like change. We don't like to try new things. It's very, um, unsettling. It's very apprehensive for us. And I was afraid of making a purchase and hating it. Um, I don't know why it seems ridiculous now when I think about it. And when I think about how much diamond painting has helped me and that if I had just taken the plunge earlier, what would my mental health journey have looked like? Would it have improved faster? I don't know. Um, and we'll never know. So, you know, I, I can't dwell on that. Um, but my first diamond painting was a unlicensed, <laughs> stolen artwork <laughs> from Amazon um, of Lilo and Stitch that I bought to do for my 31-year-old autistic daughter, uh, Samantha. So, um, that was, that's how I got started diamond painting and I never looked back. So, and I can't imagine ever looking back. If you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? Wow. Okay. That is a really, wow, Naomi, that is a really difficult question one diamond painting company for the rest of my life and why? <sighs> I think I would have to say art and soul. And that's really difficult. Um, why I would say art and soul 
is that I love confetti. I love confetti kits and I love that their diamond paintings are, a lot of them are very heavy confetti. Um, my second choice would be Diamond Art Club. The only thing that would make me choose Diamond Art Club over Art and Soul would be drills. I do prefer the drills from Diamond Art Club to the drills from Art and Soul. Art and Soul, though, is looking at upgrading their drills, so that would be a big win. Um, but yeah, I, I think I would probably, I'd probably choose Art and Soul. Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm actually getting close here to, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year I own more Diamond Art Club kits than I do Diamond, or I'm sorry, Art and Soul kits than I do Diamond Art Club kits. And I've been buying from Diamond Art Club for over a year now. I've only been buying from Art and Soul since I think February or March. So when when diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. Um, I I watch YouTube um, and catch up with other creators. So I do do that, but I binge watch shows on TV. I don't do audiobooks, I do not listen to podcasts. Um and the only thing I watch on YouTube is movie trailers um, and or other creators, whip and chats, you know, post reviews, other creators' contents. Um, I am always streaming something TV-wise and watching. Um, currently, I've been watching The Connors um, on Netflix. I've also been watching, when I want something a little heavier, I've been watching House of Cards again. Um, I'm also watching Game of Thrones so I've, I've kind of got it a little, a little bit of everything here and there. Um, so yeah, but that's what I do. All right. Um, that's the end of the first picture. Okay, here we go. What is your favorite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. I have actually only ever done one landscape. I have purchased a lot and I'm excited to get into that. But my favorite would have to be like fantasy animals. Fantasy animals and animals. Um, I have all of the Richard Lorenz birds except for two. I do not have Agnes. And I do not have um, Ruffle My Feathers that came out recently. Um, I, I don't like the background colors. And yes, I know I can buy it and change it. But I it's so big um, that I... I decided to pass on that one. Um, that's the only one of the Lorenz birds that have come out so far um, that I did not buy as soon as it was released. So um, I did pass on that one. Will I get it eventually? Maybe. It's one of those like collection type things. Like, God, can do I? Can I really not have them all? Um, <laughs> or is that going to be too too much for my mental health? I don't know. Um, I love Randall Spangler's Draglings, so I don't think there's been one month this entire year that I haven't done a Spangler. Um, that was not a goal, <laughs> but um, I, I love, those are my two favorite artists, and I love doing, Jeremiah Kettner is rapidly become another favorite artist. I have recently bought a lot of Chuck Pinson's, and I am very excited to do them. I also love Bonnie White's landscapes, um, her little like scenes. Um, so I'm looking at doing one of hers this fall for the first time. So yeah. What is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from? Randall Spangler. Um, I have done, I have actually only completed two Richard Lorenz. I have two that are whips right now that I have not completed. Um, Plus a cross-stitch conversion, so three, I guess, technical whips from him that I haven't finished. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to, I just haven't had time. Um, they were for events, and then the event ended, and I had other things. And God, guys, I have so many whips, it's not even funny. But I have completed the most Randall Spanglers. 
Um, he is by far what I have done the most of. I think I've done probably 10 or 11 of his now. I mean, right now on my wall is one, two, three, four. There are four on my wall. Um, I did Huggable, which is five. I have completed one, two, three, four, five Halloween ones. So actually, I think I'm probably at more like 12. I've probably completed more like 12 Randall Spanglers. So by far, Randall Spangler. Um, what is your go-to wax when diamond painting? Go-to putty. If you use neither, what is your go-to? Um, my favorite putty is Black Dahlia. Um, I do have putty from a lot of companies that I use that I really like. Um, I like Creations Morin. I like um, Butterfly Effect Wears. Um, Joy's Putty. Uh, I, I've got an, a lot of different putty companies that I really love. Black Dahlia is my fallback. It is my fallback go-to. So is Randa's. Those are the two that are tried and true. Um, but I am a putty addict. Um, and so I buy putty from a lot of different companies. I did an entire putty stash video. Um, so I am putty, putty, putty. I do use putty in my single placers. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. Um, my wax that I use, if I'm using wax, my favorite is Randa's Hard and Sticky. Um, I also like Patty Wax Hard and Super Sticky. Um, the only reason why I choose Randa's over Patty Waxes is because Patty Wax Super Sticky is unscented all the time. And I like the scents. I am very much a scent-based person. Um, it's actually a little funny story. I went to say goodnight to my husband tonight. Um, and I was telling him how I filmed my small shop haul. And I was smelling all of the scents that Joy, Joy Martin had sent me with my purchase of her paint, her putty. She sent me a whole bunch of samples of some of her new scents that were coming out. And one of them was men's cologne. And I'll be honest with you guys, I instantly got horny. So <laughs> I took a whiff of that and I was like, Row. okay. Um, bow, chicka, bow, bow, you know, <laughs> kind of deal. I mean, I literally was like instantaneously horny. Um, and my husband just started laughing and he's like, great. So I have to smother myself with um, diamond painting putty. <laughs> I just started dying. I was like, yeah, baby, cover yourself in that diamond paint putty. And, you know, woo, it's going to get a little warm in here. Uh, what do you do with your finished diamond paintings? Do you hang them, put them in a portfolio or something else? When I first started diamond painting, I only chose kits and did kits that I was willing to frame and hang in my house. I am a very holiday oriented person. I decorate for all the seasons, all the holidays. So for a very long time, for like two years, I only bought basically holiday kits or things that um, I was willing to hang up and put in my house. Um, I don't do that anymore now that I have a, I'm not saying I don't hang them in my house or do that, but I do things now just because I like them. Um, now that I have an art room, I have a ton of them on the walls. Um, I dry mounted them on foam artboard, acid free foam artboard, and they hang in my art room. I have a bunch I need to do. The others are all on, um, like pants hangers hanging in my closet. Um, or I did recently start rolling them and putting them like a month's worth in a box. Like I roll them all together and then I put them in a box and I put, you know, June finishes, you know, July finishes, whatever, um, until I can get around to them um, because I'm running out of closet space. I do need to buy a portfolio to put some of the ones that I don't necessarily want to hang, but I want to be able to flip through and look through. I give a lot of diamond paintings away as gifts, so that is something that I do as well. Um, but I don't ever plan on any of my diamond paintings just being like nothing. 
Do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you are ready to work? Um, that's a hard one now because I do unboxings. Um, before I had a channel, I never opened my kit until I was ready to work on it. So, um, yeah, I, I never opened my kits until I was ready to work on them. That is still kind of the deal, except for some of them that I unbox for other companies. Or I'm, there are some that have been sent to me by like um, Art and Soul that I have unboxed because they were sent to me as promos or they've asked me to unbox them and I'm not necessarily working on them right away. Um, there are others that I have gotten from other small shops that I unbox just so I can give you guys a firsthand look at them. But typically I don't open a kit until I'm ready to work on it. Um, so yeah, that, that is my typical go-to is I don't do it until I'm ready to work on it. Okay. What is your number one unicorn kit that if it was easy to obtain, you'd love to own? <sighs> Agnes, one hot mess, hands down. It doesn't ask what my second one is, but I only have two. So I am going to share the other one with you. It's Christmas Eve flyby from by Bonnie White. It is the only one, well that in Bay Harbor or that in Balloons by the Bay are the only two I am missing of hers. Um so if anyone has Christmas Eve flyby, Balloons by the Bay or uh Agnes One Hot Mess and you are wanting to sell them, please contact me. I don't have any money right now, but if you're willing to wait uh, I, I, I can get them like before August. So hopefully, hopefully I can get them by August because I do desperately want them. Very, 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 very much so. Um, what is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on? Try to follow. Um, I was lucky enough to get that in my mystery box when I bought it for Christmas from Color Out of Place. And I am desperately, desperately wanting to do that kit. Um, I'm jealous that Naomi from over at House of Miscellanea is doing it. Um, but it's just, it's, um, unfortunately, I want to be able to just do it and enjoy it. And I don't have that ability right now. Do you prefer confetti, color blocking, or a mix of both? Um, if I had to choose... The choice would be confetti. I hate color blocking. I absolutely despise it. I don't mind small amounts of color blocking. Um, but like I can't, for example, hang on, let me, let me put this color away and I will show you. Um, this kit does not have large amounts of color blocking. Let me see if I can get this in the frame. This is charted as just plain white all along the edges. I added the sparklers and put some starbursts or snowflakes, if you want to call them, because Capricorn is a winter uh, zodiac, because I can't stand to just do the color blocking. So I had to add something to it. Um, a good mix of both, I guess, would be ideal, but minimal, minimal color blocking. Minimal color blocking. How do you pick which piece you want to work on next? Well, once upon a time, I used to just pick whatever I was feeling. Um, I have gotten kind of sucked into the whole event game thing. And I'll be honest with you guys, I hate it. I feel like my kits are no longer my personal choice. Um... For some events, it's fine. Like I'm doing the, the Randall Spangler event and I love working on that kit. Um, the only reason why I'm not doing that one right now is because I'm waiting for the enhancement pack to show up. So I'm not moving forward with that kit until it shows up. I've got one row done minus the enhancements that have to go on it. Um, 
but I got notification Friday it shipped. So it'll probably be here tomorrow, which would be Tuesday. I'm filming this on Monday night. Um, so that will be coming up soon. Now, I am doing Jungle Dragon, as you know. And that kit was sent to me by Art and Soul. But I was asked if I wanted it. And I said, um, oh, hell yes. Because it was on my wish list. So I was super excited about it. I have been dying to do that kit for months. And I, I waited and I waited and I ordered some special accessories for it. And then they finally came in. And so I am going to be working on that kit. And I know I'm going to love every minute of it. And that is a true for right now. Like that is a happy, happy kit for me. Um, it is a kit that I am not doing for any particular reason other than I want to because Art and Soul didn't tell me I had to do the kit at any time all they did was ask me to unbox it so everything else is my own personal choice to do and look guys we got that section done Woohoo! all right I am almost done the second um, kit or second row for this event and it's week two so that is perfect. Um, yes, I know that was not cut straight. No judgy judgy. Um, all right, so let's open up another section. I gotta move over my cover minders here, my magnets. All right, we've got them moved over. Get them on there and then I can open up this section. All right, so here we go. Okay, let's get back to the questions here. Um, what is your favorite season plus holiday to diamond paint? Halloween. I have more Halloween diamond paintings done than any other uh, holiday. Um, which is kind of odd because my favorite holiday is Christmas. So it is a little bit strange that... <laughs> Halloween is what I have the most of, but I love decorating for Halloween. I mean, I love decorating for Christmas. So, but I do have a lot of Halloween diamond paintings done um, that I'm thinking that this is going to be my year to do a lot of Christmas paintings, but I guess we shall see. I guess we shall see. Um, do you work on one kit at a time or have multiple whips at once? Uh, once upon a time, I only, before I had a channel, I only worked on one kit at a time. Um, but then I started a channel and I started to do events. Drills and chill, well, that's not true. Um, a Bella event was my first ever event. Um, but I definitely, drills and, drills and chills is when I started doing multiple events per month and having to do multiple kits. So that was when I started having multiple whips going on at the same time. Um, currently, right now, I have, I have Capricorn that I'm currently working on. I have Spring Showers, which is my Randall kit, Spangler kit, um, that I have going on right now. Plus, I am working on the 4th of July paint gem set. And after I film this video, I will be, crap, I need to move this release paper because it's not lined up right um, so that my line stays correct. So hang on a second, guys. Um, I will be doing another video for Jungle Dragon, um, prepping my canvas, which is me putting my release papers on and washi tape and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then I will be working on that kit. So I will have four going on um, at the same time. Um, my paint gem kit is, I have five out of 12 done already. So I'm not quite at the halfway point, but that'll be done relatively soon. Um, and then I 
this one I'll have three more rows to do after I finish um, the section. So this one will be done relatively soon. The Spangler one will take a little longer. It's, it's quite a bit bigger. Jungle Dragon is going to take quite a bit longer. Um, once I finish Capricorn, if the event is still going on, um, I will be switching to my Pisces teacup, which is a whip I have, and that is half done, and I will try and finish that um, to get that out of my whips as well, but it will count for the What's Your Sign event. Pisces is my husband and my oldest daughter's um, Zodiac. I have done a Libra painting in the past for Emily. She has it framed and hanging on her wall. She is actually participating in the event and she has um, a Libra kit that she is currently working on herself. Um, it just dawned on me I needed to move this. It's going to be a little off, but you guys are just going to have to deal. Um, okay. Neutral dark pieces or colorful pieces? Definitely colorful. Um, do I have a lot of neutral dark pieces? Yes. Will I do them? Yes. Do I have a preference? Yes. And that preference is colorful pieces. Um, a lot of times I'm drawn to artwork based on the colors that are in it. Um, I don't really do what you guys call portrait type paintings. Um, I have a few that are portraits. Um, you know, the girls with the big eyes or whatever. Um, I actually, I have ordered my first Hannah Lynn Groovy Girl. It has not arrived, but that is my first, my first, uh, Hannah Lynn. Um, I don't like most of her paintings. They're just not my style. It's not that I don't think they're beautiful. They're just not my style. Plus they're very color blocky. That's how she draws, um, which is fine. Just not my preference. Not my cup of tea. Um, large pieces or snack size pieces? Both. Um, I like a kit. I guess you could say my favorite size of a kit, ideally, is around the 60 by 60 or somewhere in that ballpark um, area of size. I have a lot of large kits in my stash. I've done a lot of very large kits. Um, but I do like throwing in the snacks. I do the snacks when I start to get weary or need a break. Um, most of my snack pieces are silly and funny. And a lot of people call some, like, I've heard the term rainy day kit. I don't have a rainy day kit. I have a make me smile kit. So when I am feeling down and depressed or I need a pick-me-up, I whip out one of my Make Me Smile kits, and I do it. That's how Midnight Manikiko got done. Um, I don't like cats, people. I can't stand them. I'm allergic to them. I have no love for cats. You know, I'm not a cat person. I thought that artwork was so fun, so cute, so happy, and I bought it, and I did it. And I love it. Um, and I do it all over again. Because it made me happy. The colors made me happy. The enhancements made me happy. Uh, it was just a good, good time overall. And I loved it. Um, all right. I need to pull my trash minder a little closer. And my dragon is getting away. He's got to come over here. Because he's got to keep an eye on what's going on. Um, all right. Let's see. What is the next question? Oh, we got to swap. All right, we got five to go. Well, six total. Um, place diamonds with tweezers or a pen? Um, a pen. I think anybody that uses tweezers to diamond paint, you guys are sadist. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? Um, to each his own. I mean, more power to you, but no way. There is no, I would be flinging those suckers. I'd be squeezed. They'd be popping across the room. I mean, it would be hilarious it would be extremely entertaining to see me try and diamond paint using tweezers. Um, that would be a hoot. I mean, a complete and utter riot. So um, 
obviously guys, I'm joking around and just being sarcastic when I say that you are a sadist if you diamond paint with tweezers. I, I'm just making fun. It's totally, totally okay. Um, please do not take offense to that comment. Um, squares or rounds? Both. Um, if I have a choice, nine times out of ten, I'm going to pick squares. But I do need a good round every now and then to break up doing my squares. Um, rounds, I think, are actually harder to do than squares. Squares form more of a complete picture. So I don't feel like your placement has to be as exact because it all kind of blends in together, especially from a distance. But with rounds, um, because of the fact that there is always canvas showing, if they're not lined up right, it is really noticeable, even from a distance. Um, however, I just feel like it takes less effort to do a round. Um, I, I don't know why, but I guess I just kind of feel that way, that it takes less effort to diamond paint around that I like having around to break up the monotony of doing a square. At the end of the day though, I pick the painting based on the artwork. If I like the artwork, I don't care whether it's a round or a square. Um, there are times though that if I like the artwork, but I look and I see that, for example, that it's a round, but it has, it's a painting that has a lot of small detail in it, I'll be like, what the hell? Why would you have done that in a round? There's too much fine detail. And I won't buy it because I look at the rendering and I don't think the rendering is going to do it justice with being around. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it has happened. That has occurred where, and it's mainly with a small shop that I will have, I will see that. There is a lot of paintings from some of the, the smaller shops that have say 25 or fewer paintings that they offer in general. I had that issue with Craftably. There was quite a bit of Craftably kits that were released as rounds that I'm sorry, they should have been squares. And I didn't buy them because they were, they were rounds. I love the artwork, I wanted the artwork, but that was, I would look at the renderings and I would not be happy. Um, Chromatic Duet was a very large round that I did from uh, Craftably, and it was all confetti, and I'm sorry. It was beautiful, but it would have looked so much better as a square, so much better. Um, I have actually seen that image done by another, another diamond painting company, because it's a Shutterstock image, so they license out to... A variety of places and I've considered getting it and doing it again as a square um, guys hang on one second I will be okay right guys back. I'm back sorry about that um, I uh, I had to go run and take care of something real quick but I am back um, did y'all miss me were y'all sad because I had to leave for a second which was no time for you at all um, okay uh, what is your favorite method for placing AB drills? Okay, I'm not quite sure I understand that question. Um, I guess it's asking me how I, I, I do it. Um, I, I do them just like I do any other. Um, I do purchase Joy Martins from, um, her Facebook group. She sells putty that she claims is AB tested and approved, and guys, it is. Um, Today, for example, that is in my single placer for when I have to do the ABs for this kit. Um, so if, if that's what they mean, I don't use a wax pencil, I don't use tweezers, um, I just use putty. Um, Patsy Putty is really good with ABs as well. Um, any putty is good once it's been used for a while and it's dirty. I don't have an issue. Um, Joy's, it doesn't matter. Uh, there is another company, It's So Rachel, that I don't have an issue with, even when it's brand new, straight out of the, the container or the pack or whatever. 
um, that I don't have an issue with. So, oops, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I hit the, the camera. Um, what is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? Release papers. Um, I use release papers for sectioning off my canvas. Um, I have tried doing the washi tape and that's just too much work, guys. <laughs> that is too much work. Uh, half the time, the washi tape does not like to stick to the um, plastic cover. Um, I hate and despise the perforated plastic covers on some of the Diamond Art Club kits. Fortunately, I have not had a whole lot that I have done thus far that has the perforated cover. But I, 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 yeah, I don't do it. Um, I, I don't, I dislike greatly. Um, I've tried multiple times of using it. I just, I think it's garbage. Uh, that is just my personal opinion. So I know some people love it. And if it works for you, that is great. It does not work for me. And I don't have anything against people that section off their canvases using washi tape. Um, I have considered trying the people that use the sectioning stickers. Um, but I don't see where they're going to stick after you've used them once. Um, whereas my release papers from Bee's Crafty Corner, I can use them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and they're always perfect, great, and lay flat. So that's what works for me. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Do you have any other crafty hobby aside from diamond painting? No, not anymore. I used to cross stitch between um, my eyesight and my hands. I, I can't do that anymore. And I prefer diamond painting way over that. Um, once upon a time, I used to actually collect stamps. That was a hobby that I did with my mom. Um, I need to find where I can sell them because I've got a lot of stamps. Um, but I, I haven't done that in many, 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 many years. So, um, I used to do card making. Haven't done that in many, 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 many years. And have no plans of ever going back to doing that. It's just something Emily and I used to do together. Um... Now that she diamond paints, man, we are, yeah, we won't ever be doing anything else, I don't think. I think diamond painting will be it for us forever. Uh, let's see. Who do you tag to do this video? Well, let me see. I am going to tag um, the Crafty Diamond. So I'm going to tag, tag Debbie from the Crafty Diamond. I am going to tag Alyssa, the diamond stitcher. And am I going to do a third person? Who do I want to do? I'm going to do Lizette from Lizette Crafts and Tells. I love her stuff. I don't know that she'll do it, though, because she doesn't do whipping chats. So I don't know that she will, that she will do it, but I'm sure as hell going to tag her. And um, we'll see. We'll see if she will or not. Um, so with that, I'm going to say that we're probably close to an hour um, at this point in time. Uh, hopefully that is correct. So let me just talk about uh, what's going to be coming up. Um, so like I said, this will be up on Wednesday. Um, Thursday is going to be the kit up of Jungle Dragon Lord. Um, Friday, I am hoping to have an unboxing for you, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't hold me to that. Friday is going to be the Jungle Dragon Lord um, setting up my canvas, sectioning it off, putting the washi tape on, just what I kind of do to my canvas to prep it. Um, before I start to work on it. Um, so that is going to go up on Saturday. Um, I already have for next week a small shop haul and a post review for you. So those will be up for next week already. 
Um, they're already filmed. I just have to upload them to my channel. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what I have going on. Um, I am considering doing a, I thought about doing a mid-year stash video. However, I have a lot of diamond paintings that I'm waiting to come in, um, from Art and Soul and the one with the diamond art. So I don't know that, I don't know that that's going to be the case. Um, at least not anytime soon. I thought about doing one because it was the middle of the year, but I, I don't know. I might, I might hold off and wait on that um, and maybe just do one next year. Now, I will tell you, there is not going to be a June month in review. I have decided to try something different and I am going to do, in September, there will be a summer with Diamonds and Dragonflies and I will do a review of my kits from June, July, and August. So I have decided to do that instead and to do one quarterly. Um, and we'll see. You guys will have to let me know. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the sound of that? Or would you much rather see a month in review every month? Um, part of my reasoning for doing it as a quarter is that then I can do more in-depth month, uh, you know, post reviews, because the fact of the matter is it's usually the end of the month when I'm wrapping up all of my kits since I do multiple kits at a time, um, that I feel like, well, I'm finishing everything like the last week of the month and then I'm filming a month in review. Why am I bothering to do individual videos? Whereas I would like to be able to go more in depth in a video by itself because not everybody wants to see every kit. So that was kind of my thought process is that I can do more in depth breakdowns of my kits throughout the month. And then at the end of the quarter, then I do an overall where I just kind of refresh and go through them real quick. Um, and then you can also see the side projects that I did and off canvas things and that kind of stuff. So let me know what you think about that idea down in the comments. Um, because I do, I do care. I do, I very much would like to know your opinion on that subject and what you think about that idea. Um, so let me know what you think about my tag questions. Um, feel free to answer them along as well if you want to let me know all of those things about you. Please consider joining my Patreon so that you can become part of the Diamond Tribe and I can get to know you better um, and have that everyday support, especially if you suffer from social anxiety and mental health issues. We are here. We are here to support you. Um, it is a safe place it is a place where you can get the support you need um, and that you never have, you're never alone. I mean, seriously, guys, somebody is always up and talking. Um, some of us are night owls, so we're up till the wee hours of the morning. Um, and it, there is always somebody there for you. I swear, I swear to you that is the case. So please give it some serious thought. Um, you know, it's, it's cheaper than getting a drink from Starbucks, you know, so give it, give it some thought, you know, I, I really hope you do because I would very much like to be able to be there for more of you, get to know more of you and to give you that support, um, that you can get while helping support my channel. So with that, um, please hit that like button. It really does make a difference in my videos. Um, in the comments. So let me know what you think about doing the quarterly month in review and having more in-depth reviews of the kits I do. Um, leave me um, a goat emoji for Capricorn um, to show that you made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, and 
just let me know how you're doing. Because I, I do care, guys. I really, really do. I'm not just saying that. It is not just words. Please ask any member of my Patreon and they will tell you that I do care about you guys with all my heart. Um, and remember, without the darkness, we'd never get to see the stars. See you guys soon. Love y'all. Bye.